Hey, linear algebra and differential equation students. What I'm going to be looking at today is I'm going to be looking at mixture problems. And so we're going to look at and concentrate on mixture problems where the rate of change for the volume is actually constant. So we could have rates of change for the volume that are not constant, right, that are really dependent upon uh, some kind of function, but we're not going to really deal with that today. We're going to look at ones that are more basically simple first order linear differential equations. And what we're going to do first, or what I'm going to do first, is I'm going to set up the problem, set up kind of the idea that we're working with in the problem. Then we'll go through, set it all up, and then solve. So let's suppose that we have a vat that holds 10,000 gallons of liquid. And at the top of the vat is a spigot that pumps in liquid at a rate of 5 gallons per minute. The vat that instantly mixes the liquid and pumps out the well-mixed contents of the vat at a rate of 4 gallons per minute. So what I want to do first is I want to imagine what's going on here. So I've got a really large vat. The reason why I made the vat this size is so that what I don't end up with is I don't end up spilling. So that at no point I don't have to worry about the fact that I'm going to spill something from my vat. Into the vat we've got something flowing. We've got a spigot. And this spigot is flowing into the vat at a rate we're told of 5 gallons per minute. So 5g per n. And then at the bottom we've got a well mixed mixture. So the salt instantly goes in, mixes up with everything, so it's a well-mixed mixture, and then out, it's going to flow out at 4 gallons per minute. And so at some point in time, we'll have an amount in there. That amount is obviously the volume in there is going to be increasing because we're putting more liquid in than is coming out. And as that happens, we've got a certain amount of salt in there right now. Uh, what will happen as we pump more of our mixture in is that either the salt will increase, the salt uh, content in, um, or the salt concentration will increase, or it'll decrease. And the amount of salt will then thus increase or decrease. Okay? But here's the thing. What's happening here is we have two variable amounts. One of the variable amounts is our volume because that's changing. And then the amount of salt, which we're going to call A, is also changing as well. So the amount of salt is changing as well. What we're going to do is we're going to think about a differential equation that's actually, in fact, going to model the amount of salt because that's what we're going to be interested in. And it's going to be dependent upon this volume function that we're going to create. So now that we have a sense of how this is going to kind of work, what we want to do is we want to think about our differential equation. So we're going to think about dA dt. We want to set up dA dt. So this is the amount of salt changing over time. At its base, what that is, is that's going to be the amount in minus the amount out. So that's going to basically be the amount in minus the amount out. That's the change in the, the amount over time, right? Basic, kind of a basic thought. So let's think about this amount in, okay? So we've got this amount in, and what's going to happen is we're going to get a rate for that. And so this is going to be equivalent to, we're going to call this C1R1, where this is the concentration in, and we're going to multiply that times the rate the uh, liquid is pumping in. So we got C1 times R1. So you've got the concentration, how much parts per, in this case, it's going to be parts per gallon that of our salt, in this case, because we're going to be looking at salt, times how fast is that liquid pumping in. So if I look at my problem, I'm going to suppose that we pump in a salt mixture that contains 0.5 pounds per gallon of salt into the vat. And suppose before we begin pumping, there's 25 pounds of salt mixed into the 600 gallons of liquid already in the vat. How much salt will there be in the vat after one hour? So my concentration one is going to be that 0.5 pounds. So I got 0.5 pounds per gallon. And my R1, as we said before, is going to be 5 gallons per minute. Multiply those two together. I got C1 times R1. That's going to equal 0.5 pounds per gallon times 5 gallons per minute. And what we get is we get 2.5, the gallons go away, and we get 2.5 pounds of salt per minute. And that's the amount that's going in per minute, and that's our first, our first variable. That's that number right there. Now we need to figure out the amount out. So the amount out, if you remember our picture, our picture has this spigot down here. So the amount out is actually going to depend, or at least its concentration is going to depend upon how much salt is in there. Okay. If we look here at our amounts, what you'll notice is that this is five pounds per gallon. 
okay? So our C2 for our amount out, our C2 is going to be how many pounds are in the vat right now divided by the number or the volume of the tank right now. Remember what I said, that actually that volume is changing, right? More water is going in than coming out, so consequently it's not an, a constant amount inside of, inside of the vat. So we're going to actually get a function for this. And in fact, this number of pounds in the vat right now, that's also a function. In fact, that's the thing you're looking for. You're looking for how much salt is in the, the tank right now. We're going to call this amount, the amount of the tank right now, we're going to call it A of T. And we're going to call the volume in the tank right now V of T. Okay? So A of T over V of T. Those are both functions. And then our R2, our rate 2, that's going to be our 4 gallons per minute. Notice our A of T is going to be a number of pounds. And our V of T is going to be a number of gallons. So when we multiply the two of them together, a little bit of stoichiometry, and you're going to end up with the actual amount out at any given time. We're doing some differential equations, so A of T is going to remain an unknown. That's what we're solving for. We're solving for this. And we're actually also going to have to solve for V of T. How do we do that? Well, the fact is, is that we actually have another differential equation that's going to do that. So we know that DV dt is going to equal the rate in minus the rate out. R1 minus R2 which in our particular case is going to equal 5 minus 1. Think about our 5 minus 4, or equal to 1. Think about it for a second. That makes sense. The change in the volume over time is going to be the rate in minus the rate out. So over time, we'll increase the number of gallons in the tank for 1 gallon per minute. So that's 1 gallon per minute. So now I need to solve the differential equation in order to get my equation for volume. I've got my differential equation here, which is just one. What I need now, too, is an initial condition. And then that's the 600 gallons of liquid already in the vat. So I'm going to see, say that V of zero is going to equal 600. That's the other piece of information that I need. So dvdt equals one. What we can do is we can separate the, the variables. We end up with dv equals dt integrate both sides, and we get that V of T is going to equal T plus, and this is going to end up being, call it V naught, my initial volume. Plug in my initial condition. I've got V of zero equals zero plus V naught, and we know that that equals 600. So V naught equals 600. What that then means is that I get V of T so V of T equals T plus 600. There's T plus 600. Now, that's great. It's pretty much going to do the work that I needed to do. So let's take a look now, and we're going to go in, and we're going to then generate our differential equation and solve. Remember, our differential equation for A, D A D T, is the amount in minus the amount out. The amount out in is 2.5 pounds per minute. So dA dt now, so here's our dE, is going to equal 2.5 minus A of t, we'll just call that A, divided by, and then the volume V of t, which is t plus 600, times 4. And that's my differential equation. So dA dt, and we'll write this as plus 4 over T plus 600A equals 2.5. That is the differential equation for, that we're going to have to solve in order to, in fact, find a function for the amount of uh, salt in the, in the tank at any given time. So this is the first order differential equation. We got dA is equal to, or dA dt plus 4 over T plus 600A is equal to 2.5. So we're going to use an integrating factor in order to solve this. We're going, to let, we're going to e to the integral of 4 over t plus 600 dt, and that's going to equal my, my integrating factor i of t. i of t, thus, is going to equal e 
to 4 times the natural log of t plus 600, which is equal to e to the natural log of t plus 600 to the fourth power. And that is going to then give me t plus 600 to the fourth. There's my integrating factor. Multiply both sides by the integrating factor, and I get t plus 600 to the fourth equals, or times a prime, equals 2.5 times t plus 600 to the fourth. I'll integrate both sides. So I integrate, I get 2.5 t plus 600 to the fourth. Okay, is going to end up equaling t plus 600 and dt. t plus 600 to the fourth times a. So now, just integrating, it's a, a u substitution. What we can see here is we're going to get 2.5 over 5, okay, times t plus 600 to the fifth equals 2, t plus 600 to the fourth times a plus c, excuse me, plus c, some kind of constant, we'll call that c1. So now a of t is going to equal 2.5, or rather 1 half, times t plus 600, plus c1 over t plus 600 to the fourth. And that is our differential, that's the general solution. So there's our general solution to the differential equation. What I need to do now is I need to put in my initial condition. So let's go up and let's see what my initial condition was. My initial condition is I have 25 pounds of salt in the mixture, mixed into the 600 gallons. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to plug that in. So, and that's after one hour, excuse me. No, that's the initial amount. So that's, that's T of zero, pardon me. So A of zero, excuse me, A of zero is equal to 25. So that means that I got one half times 600 plus C1 over 600 to the fourth equals 25. Go ahead and plug that in your calculator. And what you get is you get C1 equals negative 3.564 times 10 to the 13th power. And don't be surprised if it's kind of large because it is. But remember, you're going to divide it by t plus 600 to the fourth. So you're dividing it actually by a pretty large number already as well. So it's fine. It's going to be a little bit big. So we plug back in c of t. We get a of t equals 1 half times t plus 600 plus negative 3.564 times 10 to the 13th all over t plus 600 to the fourth. And if you want, you can do some simplification here. That's not a problem. What we're now going to have to do is we're going to have to figure out how much salt is in the vat at time 60. Once we have our, our particular solution, there's the particular one, we'll have to plug in 60 because we want to know how much is in there after an hour. Our time units are in minutes, so that, that's what we need to figure out. I now get A of 60 is going to equal 1 half 60 plus 600 plus, or rather we'll take it as minus, minus 3.564 times 10 to the 13th, all over 60 plus 600 to the fourth. Plug that into our calculators and what we end up getting is we end up getting the amount A of 60 is equal to 517.8287002 pounds. And so essentially that's the basics of what we're doing here with our mixture problems. So as a kind of little review, let's just take a look. The problem that we were trying to solve had us actually figure out, we wanted to create a differential equation where we wanted to have the amount out, amount in over time minus the amount out over time. In order to do that, the amount in was going to be a concentration one times the rate one. Okay, So that's basically the concentration of what's being pumped in times the rate at which it's being pumped in. In the case of this kind of problem, that's a constant. You're just multiplying two constants together to get another constant. The amount out is where things get tricky. And the amount out, our Concentration two is actually the amount that's in the vat at any given point in time, and that's variable. That, in fact, is the function we're trying to solve for and why this is a differential equation. The volume, okay, is also variable, and so we're going to have to use a differential equation for that too. And to find that volume, we're going to use the rate in minus the rate out. 
okay? Rate in minus the rate out. And then we need to solve that differential equation. Once we've solved that and found the, the value for our volume out, we're now gonna take that A of T over that equation, okay? And multiply that by the rate at which the well mixed mixture is coming out. This gives us our differential equation. That differential equation is a first order linear differential equation. So we'll use our integrating factor in order to solve that. Once we found our general solution, plug in the, your initial condition in order to get the value for your constants. And then after that, it's just a matter of working with some different functions. Hopefully that helps you out in terms of understanding how to uh, solve these mixture problems when what we have is we have a constant rate um, of the volume either moving in or moving out. This is Dr. George Sweeney and I want to thank you for watching my video. If you found it helpful and you liked it, go ahead and click the thumbs up. If you want more of these videos and you want to get my updates, please click subscribe. If you have any questions or you just want to say how much you really enjoyed the video, go ahead and leave some comments. I do read and respond to the comments.